right, it's about five o'clock. We're going to get started. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Welcome to Affiliate Summit East 2012. Yeah. My name, is, my name is Daniel M. Clark. I'm a podcaster at QAQN.com, and I'm honored and thrilled to be the MC for this event. And I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to read a few announcements, and we'll get right to the panel. So without further ado, um, free Wi-Fi in the keynotes, breakout sessions, and in the dining and networking areas. The, uh, the ID is Affiliate Summit, and the password is ASE12 Wi-Fi, actually. You'll have that printed on the back of your uh, badges, and it is case sensitive. So keep that in mind. Follow ASE12 on Twitter and Affiliate Summit on Twitter for news, promos, and networking. Enter the Vegas Baby competition for a chance to win a VIP pass to Affiliate Summit West 2013. That's happening in January, and you don't want to miss it. It's awesome. It's my favorite one, actually. Affiliate Summit, like I said, 2013 will be at Caesars again in Las Vegas, January 13th to the 15th, um, not 2012, 2013. Registration is open, so get on that. It will sell out. We need your feedback. Do you have the Event Method app for Android and iPhone? This is a really slick app, you guys. I'm really happy with it. Um, it gives you all kinds of information about all the sessions, times, speakers, the works. It's like having uh, that section of Feedfront magazine right there on your device. It's fantastic. The Affiliate Summit forum is great. Network, learn, have fun. Forum.affiliatesummit.com. And uh, if you haven't joined, do so. Lots of conversations happening 24-7, and it's a great time. What are you doing tonight? The Share Sale Under the Stars Party, one of my favorites. Uh, 9 p.m. to midnight in the Hilton New York Ballroom. It's a 70s disco theme, so find a costume and, uh, and show up and get ready to disco dance, I suppose. 4,279 attendees, the largest affiliate summit East to date. It's fantastic. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's great. Ah, here we go. Now on to the keynote panel. Uh, women of Affiliate Marketing. I'm going to pass it off to Nick. He's going to give the introductions for the panel. And uh, again, thanks for being here. So Nick Kosiansky, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Is this on? Okay, great. Uh, my name is uh, Nick Kosiansky. You may or may not know me as Nikki Cakes. I run an affiliate marketing blog and do lots of stuff in the industry. Uh, and the panel tonight is uh, on women in affiliate marketing. Uh, I have with me four amazing ladies. Uh, down at the end, we have Missy Ward, who is the co-founder of this show, Affiliate Summit. Uh, she has a Twitter. It's at Missy Ward. Uh, we have Ray Hoffman Dolan, CEO of Pushfire, and you can reach her on Twitter at Sugar Ray. Uh, Aaliyah Portillo, Director of Affiliate Marketing at Adsimilis. Her Twitter is EWOW with two W's at the end, 19. Very professional, yes. Very professional. <laughs> and Amanda Orson, Managing Partner of Lacuna, am I saying that right? Lacuna Group, uh, and her Twitter is at Fillion with two L's. Um, and I guess I should give you guys a little bit of a backstory on um, what this panel is about and why I'm moderating it. Um, I think earlier this year there was a post, a uh, blog post by uh, on Finch Cells, which is an affiliate marketing blog, and the, it was a kind of a sensationalist title to it, and it was like zero percent of affiliate marketers are women. And the premise of his blog post was hey, I went out and I looked for blogs of female affiliates and I couldn't find any. So, I mean, why are there so few women in the industry? Um, and, so jumps in here. <laughs> and then in response to that, um, a guy named Pace Latin, who runs a blog, Perform Insider, made an even more sensationalist post about, like, how dare you say that there are no women and uh, here are the 10 best uh, female affiliates and... Uh, and there was some discussion in the comments of that uh, that I was involved with that were, you know, me personally, I was like, well, I, I don't know a whole lot of female affiliates, like, as far as pubs are concerned. Um, so I kind of agree with 
I kind of agree with Martin or uh, Finch on this one. And, and there was a, a back and forth with Missy, and I think Ray was involved too. And so Sean asked me to be the moderator of the Women in Affiliate Marketing panel, I guess, <laughs> as some sort of cruel punishment. And or is it because Nikki loves women so much? Because I love women. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I am personal friends with a few guys, and I, uh, with the exception of Ray, I, I just met Ray. I'm not yes. saying we're not friends, I'm just saying I just met you. <laughs> uh, but four, four amazing ladies in the industry, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored to be asked to, to moderate the panel. So I uh, figured we'd get started. Uh, just as far as statistics are concerned, I asked Missy for like the actual numbers for Affiliate Summit, and about one-third of the uh, Affiliate Summit attendees are women, and it's about the same for people signed, registered as affiliates. So obviously there are plenty of women in the industry, not, not as many as men, but... So uh, if you look at it, that means if we have 4,279 attendees, there were over 500 women, 500 women affiliates <laughs> that label themselves as affiliates here. So that already discounts the zero affiliates in the sure. industry by like 500. <laughs> so that was good. I have one, one other little statistic too. Um, oftentimes I read blog posts of not necessarily the affiliate marketing industry. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, but um, of other uh, different types of sh trade show groups. And you'll, you'll read that there are not a lot of women speakers at the shows, things like that. Well, I'm excited to say that 31% of our speakers here are also women, so that's pretty huge. Um, so I guess we should probably get some backgrounds on you guys, and I guess we'll just go down, uh, go down the line and, and just introduce yourselves and uh, I guess answer like how, how did you get started in affiliate marketing and what was it like when you started? You want to start yes. with uh, Amanda? I guess I'm, I'm going to start. <laughs> so I got started in affiliate marketing uh, tail end of 2007. I basically wanted to break out of a cubicle, like a lot of people. I had a very stuffy job at a law firm, doing a whole lot of uh, not much. So I started exploring online, and uh, I actually found affiliate marketing through a really circuitous route. I found it from uh, Josh Wexelbaum, I think, was posting on the 4-Hour Workweek blog. Um, so I signed up for a few affiliate networks and had you know, some hit or miss uh, success in that 2007, 2008 time frame, but I ended up doing really well with local lead generation, and uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing since. I got into affiliate marketing in 2008. Prior to that, I was an account executive at a traditional direct response agency uh, in Los Angeles called Russ Reed. We did a lot of print, broadcasts, which was TV and radio, um, direct response for St. Jude's, World Vision, and a lot of nonprofits trying to buy media. Um, in 2008 was the recession, and everyone stopped donating, and budgets froze, and I realized I needed to quickly get interactive experience to keep progressing as a direct marketer. Um, so I started working at AKMG, which is coincidentally founded by a woman, Kim White. Um, worked there for two years, and then now I'm the director of the affiliate management team for Ed Simulus. We're based out of the Netherlands, and uh, we are having a happy hour tomorrow from 4 to 6 if you guys want to attend. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> um, my name is Ray Hoffman, uh, probably better known online as Sugar Ray. Uh, I fell into affiliate marketing in 1998. My son had a massive stroke in 1997. Uh, I ended up accidentally founding the first national support group for parents and families, pediatric stroke survivors. And at the time, I just figured like there had to be a way I could make some money online because I was donating so much of my time to that. Um, kind of fell into affiliate marketing, uh, and two guys found me on a message board who I'd love to shout their names out, but they're both very private people, and basically just led me in the right direction um, as far as getting started with affiliate marketing. Within six months, I was making a full-time income better than anything I could have ever hoped for um, from doing affiliate marketing. I've been doing it ever since. Um, I own websites in a variety of niches, um, biggest in mobile. Um, we have between, depending on the month, between three and five million pages a month in mobile. Um, and basically just kept doing the affiliate stuff. I've competed in weight loss, satellite TV, heavily competitive stuff. I do it primarily through SEO. Um, so I actually didn't even attend an affiliate summit until probably three or four years ago because I considered myself 
and SEO, um, which is one of the things we'll get to as far as how women classify themselves. Um, but I considered myself an SEO, uh, and so I've been doing that ever since. About a year ago, I started, or not a year ago, oh my god, uh, about three months ago, I started a uh, search engine marketing firm, so I do that in addition to, but I still own all of my affiliate sites um, and don't ever see stop creating those little niche affiliate sites and the larger ones. So my name's Missy Ward, and I should tell you as the most, ooh, as the most senior person on this panel, <laughs> um, I graduated college uh, at 19 and got my very first job as an accountant um, for an advertising agency, and that's my background. I'm a numbers girl. At least that's what I thought I was going to be when I grew up. So after about um, three months of working at this job that I'm saying to myself, if I do this for the rest of my life, I might as well just kill myself right now because it was awful. I was uh, fortunate enough, um, I'd like to say that I got a promotion in, within the company, but basically the owner said, well, you know, you're a nice girl. I could tell that you don't like what you're doing. You tell me you want to work in the marketing department, so I'm going to promote you and I'll put you in there, but I'm not going to pay you for a year. I'm like, all right, cool. Now I have to move back home, but that's fine. So most of my background's been in um, direct response. I started out um, doing a lot of print. I did um, get into DRTV phone scripts and just about everything related to that. At a marketing job and somewhere circa 1999 for a startup I was working for, um, the owner of the company uh, came in to me and he's like, you know that Amazon thing where they basically pay people, they're like outside people, and they only have to pay them if they sell. I'm like, that sounds like a good idea. He's like, well, I would like to do that for our company. I'm like, that's cool. And he always used to use the term we, like we should do that for our company. So for a while there, I always thought that there was like a French woman that worked in our company named we that always had to do everything. <laughs> I'm like, we could do it. Well, it fell on my, my lap to figure out what this affiliate marketing thing was and how I was gonna integrate it within our company. So. My, uh, the first thing I did when you get into affiliate marketing and you don't know anything and your boss is now telling you you have to basically create a merchant program, you have to look at it from the affiliate perspective. So um, I, my very first uh, link was an Amazon link for some book stuff and I made a couple of sales. I'm like, okay, I sort of understand it from the affiliate perspective, now I have to integrate it. So since then, um, since 1999, I've acted as an affiliate manager. Um, affiliate, I own numerous affiliate sites, some public, some not. Um, and uh, for years, I've just been an affiliate marketer from then. And finally, somewhere around 2005, I stopped working for um, uh, other companies and went into business for myself. And that's where I've been ever since. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, obviously, very awesome women in the industry. Um, so I guess, like, to get started, on the discussion, why th there are obviously women in the industry, but why why are there fewer than than the guys? And um, I asked uh, for all the stuff we're talking about. I asked uh, every everybody here to kind of come up with their own ideas for um, for different stuff, and and uh, so I figured I would just uh, let you guys talk about it. And uh, uh, Aaliyah, did you want to get started? Do you have uh, any like? Any reasons behind why there might be fewer women in the industry? Well, I think some of us did some research on stats on you know how are women brought up or is it intrinsic in our chemical makeup and all that. So I'll let you guys speak to that if you did the research, which I think we have some interesting stats on. Um, my personal opinion is it's kind you know one I think it's kind of how we're brought up. Um, yes, there's fewer women in math and science and computers, and that's. It's just how it was in my era, but that's obviously changing. Uh, and two, I think it's such a new industry and it's evolving. I mean, there's more and more women every day, so that number could very well be different pretty soon. So. Okay, so first of all, I want to say, if you look at like the technology sector overall, um, women in the technology sector, it's like 10%. You get into like the nonprofit area and the number of women within that field goes up to about 20%. And then you look at like our little, little niche in, you know, technology or whatever. And when you're looking at numbers, um, I put out, I published a report called AppStat.com, and the people that responded were all affiliates, and we're recognizing that there's 
a, a much larger percentage of women that somehow fell into affiliate marketing. I don't know why, but we do. But you know, when you look at, like, especially the women in this room, you have to consider ourselves lucky because we have different opportunities than you know, our grandmothers and our mothers had. You know, there's definitely a lot more opportunity for us. I think that you know, there's still a lot of issues that women face on a daily basis of how to, in essence, you know, balance being very aggressive and being very career oriented with you know, maintaining a family or having whatever personal life that you want to have. Women, for whatever reason, women still, I still look at it as, they look at it as have, having to make a choice. And I think that pretty much defines um, the paths that we go in life and what areas um, we're willing to risk in, in order to have or not have it all, in my opinion. I, I think, and we had talked about this in the thing, but I think a lot of female affiliates don't, don't just don't classify themselves as affiliates. Um, like I said, up until four years ago, I definitely, if you had asked me, what do I do for a living, I would have said SEO. I took no clients. I was 100% affiliate, but if you asked me what I did for a living, I would have told you that I did search engine optimization. Um, I think a lot of women in the industry consider themselves bloggers, um, and rather than give the definition of affiliate marketing, even though that's how they make money from their blogs, what they consider themselves are bloggers. So I think that, that some of it comes down to, I think women just define themselves differently as far as their roles within the industry. Um, Whereas men tend to, and I hate to generalize it like this because I think the whole thing's crap, but yeah. Um, but whereas men tend to, you know, go for the more technical terms where they're not a blogger, but they're an affiliate. Um, and I think that there's also, and Amanda, you can speak to this, but there, there, I will say that from my experience, there is a huge divide between traditional affiliate where you sell a product and you get paid a commission for that product. There's a, a much bigger percentage of women, I think, in that that sector than in the lead generation side of things. I totally agree. Uh, and just listening to uh, your stories, I think I started to realize that a lot of the men, especially for the CPA space, come from technical backgrounds, which is a point Nick actually brought up. Um, they worked in IT departments or had computer science degrees or, or were somehow internet and programming savvy beforehand. But a lot of the women that have come from one background over others are, is marketing. That's what it seems to be. And I think that if you follow that divide, regardless of gender, the marketing individuals tend to um, be more involved in agency or network side, or they're doing things like <coughs> SEO if, they're, if they get good at it. Uh, but they build big branded sites, and they're more likely to be involved with something like Blogger or one of the SEO conferences and may not realize that what they're doing is affiliate marketing. Well, I want to touch on this quickly. <clears throat> so when I was pulling the statistics for, for Nick the other day, of the women, you know, dividing up all of our data over the last few shows, um, you know, you have your data, it's self-reported data. So every attendee here has to select what they are, what they consider themselves. So I'm like, all right, here's the data. I just want to, like, eyeball this information. Now, I, yesterday I taught a, a workshop of, for monetizing your blog. There were a lot of women that were there that were mom bloggers that um, several of them I comped passes to attend the show because they're at this point where this is make or break for them. They're either gonna get in it, which is going to bring more people into our industry and helps you know, our little ecosystem of affiliate marketing benefits everybody if I bring more people into the industry. So I figured, mm -hmm. let me do this for them. So I just looked, um, looked at what they reported themselves as when they registered for the show. And what I found was none of them selected affiliate. And um, what was kind of funny is they didn't find any category for themselves. And I'd given them networking passes, so they selected that they were networks. So what I'm saying is they're just not <laughs> classifying themselves as an affiliate. So that's, that's what, you know, just to touch on your point. Yeah. We, the other thing is, too, as you had mentioned that the dude said he couldn't find any affiliate marketing blogs. <coughs> Tell him to search Google for affiliate marketing blogs and he'll find two in the top ten. So it, it's kind of like I think that if you're not necessarily looking for it, and they say that with all statistics, right? You can find statistics that will make your case if you search in a way that slants it to your case. So. And just as an affiliate manager, I can say that uh, just because you have a blog doesn't mean you're necessarily a successful affiliate. <laughs> That's true in every industry. Um, so I guess, are there any other factors that might uh, make it just, like for me, for example, um, to me, 
it may have appeared that there were a lot fewer female affiliates. Could it be like that I just don't hang out in the same crowds or? Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. look at you and, you and I, I don't even know how many years we are apart, but we don't Probably do like this. two. Yeah, two. <laughs> you, you just met me last night. You know, and I know that we know each other's names. But we just, I mean, I think there's different age groups that travel in different packs where I might necessarily, I, I know I'm not at the same parties that you go to afterwards. So, I mean, if we didn't know each other, you would have never ran into me. Um, we just, you know, some of us that are in the same vertical, like I look at like, you know, some of my friends that are here that are, are in the same vertical, we all sort of stick together. So if you have, I'm gonna use like Connie as a coupon site, she may, you know, she has her niche of friends that are in similar, you know, verticals. We all tend to congregate together where if you're doing a lot of CPA offers, we probably are never gonna meet. Um, so, I guess we could move on to like how, how can we attract more women to the space? Because if there are fewer, I mean, I guess maybe the goal might be to, to attract more women, right? So um, are there any like glaring barriers of entry that you can see? I think the barrier of entry is what people put on themselves. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yes, mm -hmm. if you're gonna be, you know, um, self-employed in this industry or any industry, there's risks associated with it. So. You know, I think, um, I know with my friends that have tried to, you know, make the decision of whether they want to create their own business or continue working for another company, they have to measure that now at different, you know, time frames of their life, you know, of whether it's the right time for them to do that. I think, um, you know, some, some of the people say, well, women don't really just get into this industry or they stereotype women in different ways. You know, you're going to speak on a couple of ways of how you know, maybe um, women in your your particular area of affiliate marketing are treated sometimes mm -hmm. um, that that might prevent women from entering into this industry. But when you know we we talked about this, it's like I look at it as anybody that's going to stereotype me is going to be the reason which pushes me forward <laughs> to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of women, um, you, I think they're in their DNA. They're not made up like that. There are a lot of women, and then a lot of women are like, okay, well, my role in this world was to do this, and this is, you know, where I'm comfortable at. So I counsel them, like, if you're, if you're ready to go and explore other things, at some point you just have to say, this is it, this is my time, I'm not going to let anybody get in my way. I, I, I think that... To be honest with you, I think sometimes our worst enemies are ourselves mm -hmm. um, because I think women tell themselves that they don't get paid as much or they don't make as much or they don't have as many opportunities. And it's kind of like, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I think I'm probably, and, and, and I don't know, I, I know Missy very well, but I'm, I, I would imagine that I'm probably like the least feminist person up here. Um, and so my opinion is, it's just kind of like, go out there and get what the hell you want. Um, don't tell yourself it's because you're female or that you can't do it because you're a chick or you know there's more males in the tech industry so you shouldn't even bother to try or I have not myself personally and I've been doing this for how old I've been doing this for like 14 15 years now and I've never and and as both SEO and affiliate are both very male dominated and I've never once felt like somebody has taken away an opportunity from me because I'm female and I think part of that has to do with I won't accept that to be a reason. Um, if I need to be better, it sucks, but I will be better. Um, and I, so I think that as far as barriers to entry, I think people need to believe that they can do it. And I think that goes for male and females that want something better than what they have. Um, but especially for females, I think you need to just take off the, the women aren't in tech, women aren't technical, um, women can't run businesses, uh, women don't know how to do SEO, women don't know how to do affiliate, and just basically I was going to do something, a gesture that I shouldn't do, but basically tell them <laughs> that's what they can do with their opinions on that. So I also think that we as parents need to you know, push our children, our daughters forward into these yeah. types of roles, that, that into getting the education that they need to get them to the places where they need to be later on in life. Absolutely. I think uh, risk aversion is definitely a factor, but I don't necessarily think that risk aversion for women is a factor that is completely exclusive to this industry. Right, that's right. that's yeah, a pretty broad right. factor. I think yeah. we're talking about, honestly, as, as we're talking more about this now, it's not just our industry, it's yeah, across it's the board. <laughs> definitely a barrier to a lot of female entrepreneurs. Um, I think that if I can speak just to the women that I know up here, uh, we're all, we all tend to be pretty aggressive and we're all pretty type A. Uh, so maybe we were destined to be entrepreneurs in one capacity or another. And I think that part of 
getting more people into this industry, especially getting more women, is instill some confidence in them right. that they can be and do and get whatever it is that they want. But I think that putting themselves into the category of being a female affiliate marketer is just another hindrance. Right. You just can't even see the stereotype. And I, I'd just like to point something out for anybody that is female in here that's just getting into affiliate marketing. But having a technical background or not makes no damn difference when it comes to being able to make money in this industry. I was a waitress before I started doing this. I got my GED. I have no college, no nothing. Taught myself. And I've built over the years four or five companies now. Um, so it's just a matter of don't let it be that the tech degrees, the percentages, the number of people does not matter if you were in here and you want to make money with affiliate marketing and quit your job or if you want to go out there and create a business by doing affiliate marketing, you can do it. You just have to basically decide that you are going to do it and that you're the only one that's going to do it and not let anybody get in your way on it. I think one of the things that I recognize most about <clears throat> a lot of the women that I see in this room, and many of you have been friends with for years, the one thing that, that is across the board, where even though we come from, a lot of us come from very different backgrounds, the one thing that everybody has that I know that's done well in this industry is they have um, gumption, they have stick to -itiveness. they have a plan in mind and don't give up. And I think that's one of the biggest things you know, I speak to a lot of women who tell me, well, I've tried affiliate marketing and I didn't, I wasn't successful. I'm like, well, ex explain to me what you, what you did. And then, you know, we could take it from there. But to just say, I tried it, I didn't like it, you know, I, I'm never going to be where you are. I'm like, well, you know, you can't just try something for a few months and think that you're going to be where I am. It, or any, you know what I mean, anywhere. But it's not like, it's like that in anything that you do. And I would say that regardless of gender, um, if there is a space that you really want to get good at, part of a huge part of getting there is to reach out to people who already are there and right. ask questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, finding ipso facto mentors has been tremendous. Being able to just ask Ray an SEO question has helped me at least a half a dozen times in the past. And it really does come down to if you want it bad enough, you'll find ways to make it happen. But reaching out to people that are already there is a big, big help. Yeah. Surrounding yourself with people, you know, like-minded people is definitely the way to go. And, you know, finding groups, you know, there's women in tech, yeah, there's yes. all different local meetups or whatever the case may be. Um, or, you know what, start your own group. You know, if that, that's mm -hmm. pretty much what I did in my own neighborhood. So, you know, you know we talk about mastermind groups and things like that. If, if there's a bunch, of, a bunch of you getting together, there's more power when you're all together, especially if you can help one another. And I think, the more that, um, that we do to help each other, not just as women in affiliate marketing or men in affiliate marketing, but the more that we are all able to work, each other and, uh, work together and empower each other, it's just better for all of us overall. Mm -hmm. I started um, earlier this year um, just a, a site called Women Online Marketers United. Um, it stemmed off of the fact that I had attended a, a yeah, I blame it all on her. I had attended a show um, last year in which it was dedicated all for women. It was an all-women show. It was supposed to be empowerment. Yeah, right? women empowerment, teaching you how to do business and all of this other stuff. She bails on me and I go by myself. <laughs> so I'm there and I'm watching this and these are women that spent $1,200, $1,300, $1,400 dollars to attend this conference that received information that was so like vague and you know so unhelpful yeah almost everything there was yeah you know so here was my session but you could buy my book and learn more you know everything was an upsell mm -hmm. to get you know, and I'm looking at this I'm looking at the this group of women that's leading this conference and I'm saying oh my god you're such a horrible person how are you taking money from like our people I'm like we're supposed to help each other we're sisters and I'm looking at them getting more and more angry and no names but they were well-known women they're like, well-known well women, women. well-known women and you know like there there's a quote out there that there's a special place in hell for women that don't help other women and this is exactly what I was looking at so <laughs> I decided that um, you know I'm gonna do something about it I can't help everyone there's only limited time so I put together this forum it's uh, join WOMU women online marketers united and the, the concept behind it was that there's a place for women only to go although we have several men that are there I'm not going to turn away any men that want to join that I'm fine with that but it's all there and we're helping each other you know spend a few minutes answer a few questions if you know the answer if you find something new that you think your fellow sisters would benefit from go in there it's free 
But like I said, this is like a tool that people could use, you know, women and men can use that, yeah, and, and networking and things like that. You need to find your little circle, your little, you know, nucleus of people that you want to surround yourself with and, you know, be able to, to work with them and learn more. Aaliyah? Well, I would say in the same vein as what Misty's saying is find people you can work with is also, at least on my part of the business, I find that everyone is very knives out and honestly, we can work together. You know, it's not a really a with us or against us. It shouldn't be a with us or against us mentality. I mean, people can move on companies, people can move up, people can change positions and it's okay. We're not all competing with each other. So for uh, people on the business side of things, on the network side of things and advertiser side of things, I'd say, have a little bit more faith in your fellow uh, fellow friends. I mean, we don't have to we don't have to attack each other. I mean, we could just all focus on making as much money as we can as individuals, and you don't have to step on other people to do that. I look at like um, so years ago when I would attend you know a affiliate marketing event. <laughs> yeah, I would say it was a tweet up, but it was before Twitter, so it was just really a meet up at that point. Um, and there would be like so few women in the room, mm -hmm. like me and maybe somebody else. And you look at like how things are right now and how the whole social landscape on the way women are driving so much more business right now, you know, this is the time for women to be getting into this industry. The way that we shop or, or the way that we communicate things that we enjoy to our fellow girlfriends is very different than the way men shop. And if you look at sites like, you know, Pinterest that are 90% women, and you, you look at like things of Facebook, I read a statistic, it was like 60% women users. We're at this point right now when if you look to the future of how, how women need to be marketed to, who better than having women in these fields doing the actual marketing to these women? I mean, there's such an amazing amount of opportunity and it's just, you know, getting, for me, being able to just push a few more women to just, you know, decide to move forward, that just makes me happy. Yeah, I don't have any stats on it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, like, middle-aged female demographic is probably the most expensive for targeting. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have, Everybody like, I look that. at, like, me. I'm like, at this point in my life, I have the most disposable income, and I buy stuff. This, you know, but a man is not going to be able to sell me something better than a woman in my age bracket. A personal recommendation from a girlfriend is always going to be better than any... TV advertisement or whatever or something like that. And women, I think, get that more than men. It's just the way that we communicate mm -hmm. to each other better. Um, let me ask you guys this. It's not on our thing, but um, how, how do you how do you uh, how do you strike a balance between like running your own business and having uh, taking care of a family? The same way a guy would. We prioritize what's most important and what we need to get done. I mean, I would say that, you know, three of us up here are moms. I am so much more driven to get my work done to make sure everything's as successful as it possibly can be because I want to have time with my family and I want to take care of my family. Mm. I, 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 sorry, I, I just, that, that question burns me because, like, hey, and, and Nick, I know you're not saying this, like, to me. I know you're asking a way, question. No. Um, but, like, why is it my responsibility? to be the one that has to balance work and family. Why is my husband who is over there, why is it not partially his responsibility? Don't look backwards. Why, why is it partially not his responsibility though? And I think, I think women also need to, and again, affiliate marketing, any type of entrepreneurship, you need to take it out of your head that it is 100% your responsibility to run your house and run your children. And your husband gets to go off to work and come home and like basically be a part-time babysitter, but you gotta do it all. Like that's not the way it works in my house, never will be the way that it works in my house we both pull 50 percent and so it's 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 like but i just look at it and i'm like i'm like it's not 100 percent my job and how do i balance it like i've got we were just talking about this beforehand i took a picture of my son's football schedule on facebook and he's got football five days a week two hours a day and he's one of my four children um and i run a company so it's kind of like a you can figure out ways to make it work but b like Football is not 100% my responsibility. Cooking dinner is not 100% my responsibility. Taking care of the house is not 100% my responsibility. Um, so sorry, Nick, I know you didn't mean it in that way, but that just, um, so it's kind of like you balance that it was, uh, having actually, a partner that'll help that you. That was out. her question. Actually, you can't, you, you can't. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you can't blame Nick, actually. He actually scrawled die 
on my uh, paper here because I'm the one that fed him the question because oh, I knew sorry about that. I knew it was a softball question that was going to get some interesting discussion. But okay. you know what's so great about affiliate marketing <laughs> is that it affords us the ability to do this. I mean, our lifestyle, we don't have to work a nine to five to make good money and to have time with our family. We're all actually really fortunate to be in this space. And that's what's so appealing about affiliate marketing. That's what's so important to get the word out there and to continue progressing, attracting more women to the space. I look at, okay, so I get this question asked of me a lot. Mm -hmm. I travel a lot. I have an incredible husband who is also in the back over there. Wait, it's my husband. Me. He's <laughs> got an amazing, uh, you do, I have an amazing partner that helps me, you know, with what I want to do. But I think the funniest question that I get all the time is, you know, how do you have it all, Missy? How do you do this all? How is everything great for you? I'm like, I do have it all. I don't have it all every single day at 24 hours a day. There are days when I'm really great at work. There are days when I'm really great with my kids. And on like those very special days that happen so few and far between where I'm awesome at both, I mean, it's perfect. But yeah, you, you can. You do. Nothing in life happens 24-7. So why should having it all, family, business, and friends, and things like that happen 24-7? I think, too, it goes the same for women affiliate marketers and men affiliate marketers. One of the big things that I see is, so people will see me tweeting that I'm off here, or I'm off there, or I'm doing that, or I'm attending this show, or I'm doing yada. And people think that, and, and all these get rich quick jerk hats, jerk hats, jerk hats. That's a new <laughs> word I just created to prevent myself from saying something else. Um, so, but all these get rich quick people are like, work four hours a week in your pajamas. And there are weeks that I work four hours a week in my pajamas after I spent years and years and years doing a hell of a lot of work to build up my affiliate business. So it is passive income, but it's not, oh, I'm going to become an affiliate on Monday and on Wednesday I'm going to have passive income. Um, it's, I'm going to become an affiliate in 2012 and hopefully by 2013 I will be generating some passive income. And I know I'm speaking from the organic side, you're more of a PPC girl, so it's, it's more... Uh, I don't want to say instant for you, but it, it's time intensive. Yeah, it's a lot more maintenance. But it's it's not a matter of like you know, Missy didn't wake up yesterday and have it all. Like it takes a long time to get to that point. So, well, the reason why I uh, had Nick ask that question, thank you, Nick, is you were too scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not scared of you guys. No, I know you are not too scared. <laughs> I'm so risk averse. It's true. <laughs> no, the reason why I actually asked that is because a lot of the women that I know personally that aren't necessarily affiliate marketers that would make fantastic entrepreneurs and business owners are super moms. Mm -hmm. Like they are doing a lot of mm -hmm. stuff. And I see a lot of the time that they apply to work and the extra hours they put into work and, you know, going to school at what expense in both time and money. It, they could be actually building a business for themselves, right. but I think that in their busyness, mm -hmm in their attempt to be the super person and not giving some of that work to their partner, to their husband, I think that they're holding themselves back. I think risk aversion, again, plays into it. My husband will tell you I'm a very good delegator to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, so. <laughs> how, how do you guys feel about a lot of the, um, a lot of the events that go on and, especially around shows and stuff, seem to be a lot more targeted towards males. I know there's like parties at strip clubs booth and stuff. Babes. How do you guys, yeah, booth babes. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think that that turns women off to the industry? And It's not our industry. If you look at like every conference, you know, you're, you're going to run into that anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's not just inherent to affiliate marketing or marketing in general. Um, like I said, I think <clears throat> maybe, maybe for me, as you get older, you just realize you don't have to be at those types of places. You don't have to do, I mean, I, I can't even remember the last time that I've done, we've even probably seen each other at the same type of party. You know, I look at like some of the things that are going on or yes, you know, have I been in a strip club? Yes, I've been in many strip clubs at some point in my life. Do I go there now? No. But what I'm Over saying, well, it's true though, I mean, I've been doing this since 1999 and, I mean, and I've seen my share of strip clubs. It doesn't bother me personally, I could care less. You know, does it bother other people? It, bo it may bother a lot of the men here as well, you know what I mean? I just don't think that it's inherent to us saying, well, it's at a strip club, I'm not going to go. I know a lot of men lot. here. Sean would never go to a strip club. And you I'm not that. sure it's, a, it's enough. I'm not sure having a booth babe is going to make anybody work with my company over another company. I'm not sure that a strip club will either. I mean, it's I think it appeals to a certain 
group. I and think they're going by your demographics. You're 67 percent male. Like, and I, I think that's a fair statement as a marketer. Like, you're going to target the majority, and then there's people that host events for the minority. We right. were talking about this the other day. They host events for the minority that they know don't like to be at those types of parties. So they're like, wait, I can catch everybody that isn't interested in what the majority are interested in and have a captivated, captivated and audience. And I want to put that out there. Like tomorrow night, we have a very big party going on. But this party is not going to be for everybody. It's got iced tea and cocoa. It's going to be Blue loud. Ball. A loud music, a billy ball, and it's probably a great event. I think, I mean, we got a lot of feedback from the last time that people had a great time. Mm -hmm. People that went there had a great time. I, that's not my speed. This isn't something for me. And I know that there's a lot more me's in our group. So we put together an alternative event, karaoke, which is something that I enjoy and a lot of my friends tend to enjoy. So what I'm saying is that it's just, I think what people need to just do is give people options. And like for me, I don't know. I'm just looking at it as I, I think smarter companies will give an option instead of forcing people into doing something that they don't want to do in the first place. If the only one option is a strip club, I think they lose the opportunity to actually get not only the women, but a lot of the men. To, to one more second, I'm sorry. But just to, to go to what you were saying, like, why are they not? The other thing that you have to think about, too, is, is safety. And I don't think that that's something that guys think about. But if you're a female and you come to the show and you're by yourself. This happened to us last night. You are less likely to wander out into a bar that you know is going to be full of 300 people, which are primarily going to be male, and, and party the night away. Um, so I, I think that there's a safety thing if, if females are coming here by themselves, like we just, we look at different things than men do. Um, I think that there's, you know, frankly, if you're, if you are a super mom and you're at home doing 9 million things, hell, you come to this conference, I have a one year old, it's like I get to sleep, <laughs> nobody is going to wake, that, you know, so you may have people that are going home just because they get a break that they don't normally get when they're at home because they're trying to do it all. Um, you know, and, and sometimes you, you get jerks that, that make you, if you did venture out, maybe might not make, make you so that you don't want to venture out the rest of the time. But I, I think it's more like who you know and yeah. how long you've been here. And, and women, we travel, we're pack oriented. We travel, I mean, you know, the big cliche that not one woman goes to the bathroom, they all go at the same time. And we, we like that. We like the whole safety numbers. It's not necessarily that there's going to be I don't think guys. there's going to yeah. be an issue, an issue but, but it's we just do. Mind you know, and I think that the folks that don't leverage, you know, targeting us, are missing out. Crazy. Um, so, let me ask you guys if you have any advice for new female affiliates that are starting out. I guess we can kind of just go around. All right. I'll bite this one first. Definitely first find a mentor. Um, find somebody yeah. in the space that you want to get involved in. Uh, don't be afraid to look at multiple vert or multiple sub niches in affiliate marketing. There are, I mean, for the four of us, each one of us does something different. And I'm sure there are at least four or five different sub niches that aren't even represented up here. Um, so I think mentoring, absolutely. And always go for free resources. I see a lot of people that want to become involved in this space and for whatever reason, it seems like Four hours a week in your pajamas. <laughs> it seems like there is a disproportionate number of women that seem to bite the bullet for those info products. Don't buy the info products. Absolutely seek the free resources. Talk to people that actually are doing what it is that you want to do. And by all means, come to events like this and uh, network and get to know people because you'll learn a lot more by talking to people in the hallway that are here than you will paying three hundred dollars for some ebook. Yeah. And I just, I think I just want to add that just. Don't be afraid to do something you don't know how to do. You know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I don't really know how to do that, so I'm, you know, I'm going to stay away from it. I think that, and honestly, don't be afraid to to talk. Don't be afraid to be a ball buster. Don't be afraid to, you know, to speak up. You know, it, it, you have to decide at some point in your life whether people, whether you want to be liked or you want to be respected and make money. That's your choice, you know, and. Um, if you could get both, that's cool too. But um, I'm just saying, I think that it, it goes to anybody, women or men. Just it, talk, ask questions, surround yourself with like-minded people. Absolutely. You, you know, if there are stereotypes out there, I'm not here to debate if there are or there aren't. There are. Like, there are. You know, <laughs> you don't have to fit in that box. Just be your own person and, you know, 
focus on pushing the industry forward. I mean, what makes this industry so amazing, you know, is that there's not a regimented schedule where you have to get an internship and then work for three years and then get your MBA. I mean, I got my MBA and a lot of my counterparts were just in this entrenched schedule that they couldn't get out of. Like, in this space, we're, it's, it's not static. It's real time. It's changing. It's, it's evolving. What we talk, what's hot at this trade show is going to be different than the one that was last year, which is going to be different than next year. So just like everyone said, find a mentor, network, get yourself out there, talk to people, and don't be afraid if you fit, of fitting into a box. I, th I think the other thing, too, I wrote a series on reasons why people fail at affiliate marketing. And again, this applies to everybody because I'm not necessarily a big fan of the gender, gender divide. Um, but the number five reason and the most common reason that I see from people is people who are only in it for the thrill of the chase, right? So you build your affiliate site. It's exciting. You're installing WordPress. You're getting your design. You're putting up your content, putting in your affiliate links, and it's like, awesome. I got this great site. And then you're like, oh, wait, now I have to work and market it. Shit. So then you come up with another awesome idea, and you build that site, and you end up with like 10 sites that are all half built, and none of them are actually doing anything. Um, so I think for women and for male affiliates, if you ask me for advice, I would say commit to it. I'm not saying that if you're committing to it and you've got traffic and you're not making any money that you should keep beating your head into a brick wall. Um, but for the most part, like, Commit to it. Commit to the fact that you are going to do this. You are going to make money at this. You are going to take advantage of all the free resources that you have at your disposal. You're going to contact every female mentor that you possibly can. You're going to join Missy's Forum. You're going to talk with the affiliate networks and talk with other women when you're at the conferences and just make sure that you basically commit to do it and then you actually follow through with doing it. That stick to itiveness thing that we were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much time do we have? Do we have can we do questions and Are there stuff? Any questions from the audience? Can we do questions? Anyone? Got it, Bell. I think we have a microphone there. Does that work? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About five minutes. Go get up. Ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, is it on? It's Have on. any of you felt like you've been held back? Uh, you're in the industry. You've been in it for years. Have you run into situations that, because you're a woman, you felt held back? I've never felt no. held back, and I've never felt like I've been giving any special breaks because I'm a woman either. I. I would agree with that, but it's funny because we were actually, I, for the first time, like I said, I, I've never been held back by it, never been disadvantaged by it, but I did have a meeting with a, a guy who was a potential client, and he refused to look at me during the meeting. He addressed every statement that he made to my partner, who was male. Um, and so every single statement, like if I said something, he would cut me off and immediately look at my husband and go, so Sean, what should we, and I'm kind of like sitting there, and like it would not have surprised me if he had asked me to get up and get him coffee. I would not have been like surprised in any way, shape, or form. And I said to Sean when we left, A, wasn't taking him. And B, I said, I wonder what happened when we left the office and he looked at our business cards and realized I was the CEO and not your assistant. Um, but other than that, like, I think that you, you do see the stereotypes. Bottom line is, I'm not going to be bothered by it. I'm not going to let him upset me and make me feel like I'm not. He's just old and misinformed. So now you can go with a crappier SEO company because I'm a good one and I'm not going to take you because you're chauvinistic. So. You know, I hate to keep talking about affiliate managers. Um, I would say that yes, affiliate male affiliates tend to sometimes assume they could speak in a certain way, and you know, unfortunately, if other female affiliate managers let them talk that way, that's unfortunate for the entire industry. The big thing is you just got to put them in their place right away, um, and not draw any attention to it. And so, yes, that does happen a lot on my side. At the same time, I also find that, you know. Female affiliates hate female affiliate managers. You know, this is something we should work on as well, because you assume that we're all just, oh, I'm just going to troll my hair and you're going to send me traffic. And it's just not like that. Um, I find I it's, it's fine. Um, no, not you know, I, I understand that there's a few bad apples that spoil the bunch, but everyone is an individual and we're all here to make money. And if you're wasting my time, you're wasting our time because I'm not going to work with you. If, you know, we'll treat us certain ways. So I guess that was kind of all over the place, but. I've worked in a, a couple of different male-dominated industries at this point, uh, and actually went to a mostly all-male military school, my background, and the one thing that I found to be very true, regardless of where I've been, is that if you don't make an issue of being a woman or of being anything, they won't either. Mm -hmm. You just have to show up and know when you show up that you're going to have to put forth twice as much effort to get half the respect, but that's part of the game. Um, I don't think that that's industry-specific at all. I think that's just being a woman. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? A lot of people. Somebody's got to have some questions. No? I guess that's it. 
We have one? Oh, right. we have one? Okay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty new at this whole thing. So um, when you guys were saying to build your site and um, add the affiliate marketing, um, are you talking about just any niche that you want to build your site on? Or are you talking about a specific? I'm sorry, I know it's not a clear question. No, I was, I was going to say choosing a niche, I think, is like the most niche, 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 I don't know. But <laughs> choosing that is probably like the most common question that I get in feedback. It's like, how do I choose a niche? And so a lot of people will say, correctly, they will say, go with something you love because it's going to be a lot of work up front and you're going to have to, to actually work without getting paid for a while, at least on the SEO side. I know PPC can be a little different. Um, and I always used to joke that I'm like, Psh, I just want whatever's going to make me money. I can learn to love anything that is going to make me money. Um, so, like, I started in telecom and satellite TV, and I can tell you neither one of those are, like, my great loves in life. Um, but it's, it's kind of like, I, I would say that if you're doing it part-time, I would go with something that you love. If you, like, totally decided, like, this is it, but mm -hmm. pick your niche. And the other big thing is, too, is that I, I meet a lot of people that will go, well, I tried affiliate marketing, bloggers especially. I tried affiliate marketing. It didn't work. Well, how'd you try affiliate marketing? I put a banner on my sidebar and nobody <laughs> bought anything. And I'm like, that's not gonna, that works about as well as CPM advertising. So like as far as conversions, you're gonna need a hell of a lot of traffic to make any money off and out on the sidebar. Um, so I think if you haven't done, you know, for anybody that's in here, I'm, I'm a big fan of reviews. Um, honest reviews, good reviews. Um, I think I wrote a post somewhere called how to make money in affiliate marketing by doing product reviews. Um, so if you just look up that general statement and RAE, um, like my first name, it should come up. Um, and like honestly, I, I think that that's the best way to do it is write about something that you love, some products that you're gonna like reviewing, throw in your informational posts in between there, but it's definitely not throwing a banner on the sidebar. Um, and I, I don't think that you can say that like, you can go out there, it's just gonna be what you will be comfortable with um, picking as a niche. Either you're gonna go gangbusters and you're willing to do what it takes and, and pick a harder niche that's gonna make you money that you don't necessarily love, but for the, the uh, stay, what did you call it? Stay, stay to it. Stick to it. For the stick to itiveness factor, if, if that's going to be an issue for you, I would definitely go with something that you like. In that okay. regard. I hope that answered that. I don't know. Were, you, were you also asking of whether you build your site and then you monetize it? or, or Yeah, a okay. little bit of both. Okay. I, I'm going to address if If we're here, I'll answer that question for you there. I mean, there's like two, two schools of thought. Like when people start to build their site, some people feel like they should build an audience first and then monetize it later. Mm -hmm. I take the other school of thought where you integrate all of your, your um, advertising, affiliate links, whatever, at the same time because it's a consistent um, experience for your, your audience from day one. You don't have to um, make changes to your site because you know now you decide you want to put ads in that weren't there before so you don't have to make design changes. The other thing is, you know what, when you first start a site, you're not going to have a lot of traffic, but, and so you're not going to make a lot of money. But little money is better than no money, so you know, mm -hmm. why not integrate it from the beginning? Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the last thing you want to do, which I've done in the past, is created a site that I thought that was the best thing ever, and I knew the products that I was going to sell along with it. So build up a readership, and only to find that these people did not take their credit card out of their wallets to buy anything. They were there for some free advice and things like that. Mm -hmm. So if you start from the beginning um, and monetize <laughs> it then, I think it's that that's a, a, if you're starting that blog with the sole purpose of making money, that's the way to go. Okay, thank or you guys. Or site or whatever. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, we're done on time, I think. One more question One more if question? we have, or that's Anyone? it. I'm short. <laughs> You're so cute. Well, um, I'm new in the industry as well, and um, I, at this point, I am. I consider myself very fortunate to be here, and you guys are a beautiful example to keep going and uh, be perseverant and stick to winning. <laughs> <and that. laughs> I'll try that. We'll but um, I'm not gonna. It's like I'm on a bull and on a wild ride with a bull and I'm not gonna stop you know and it's I've been thrown down and I sometimes I feel like I I cannot do it anymore you know because I have children and 
um, you know, the support, you know, my husband works long, long hours and all that, but long story short, and I have a part-time job, <clears throat> I work at hospitals, so long story short, how do you find, um, I've tried CPV, I've done um, mobile um, marketing or affiliate marketing, and so I've tried this and that and the other, so how, how do you find, you know, your path? Or, um, and I have different passions. I, I don't know what you sell, so I mean, that, that question doesn't, I mean, I'd have to know more about your website and what your marketing methods are to really answer that question properly. But what I encourage you to do is just test, you test different things, you know? Put a small budget, a, a very small budget to test it. And if it has legs, start rolling with it. I'm not, because not every sort of, of um, you know, way to generate traffic to your blog. Not every traffic source is going to work, but you're going to have to at some point make an investment in testing it out. That, that would be my best advice without knowing what you're selling or what your site is. I really leverage the companies you work for. I mean, I work with hundreds and hundreds of affiliates, so I, I can tell you which verticals may be better for you to start with than others. You mentioned that you do CPV and mobile. Well, then pick one of those. Start doing some recon. Start seeing what everyone, what do you keep seeing? What is something that sticks out to you that you think you can do? And talk to everyone and anyone because honestly, our, our industry is so casual and relaxed. People, once you build a relationship with them, people have endless information that they're willing to share with people they trust. So if you're really committed, just pick one thing, well, my suggestion at least mm. is to pick a traffic source or pick a vertical and really just stick at it until you own it. I was actually going to say the same thing. <laughs> I was going to say, absolutely, when it comes to a traffic source or to a niche, dominate that one traffic source first. Learn your traffic source and then build out from there. And I was going to say, too, that like you're an affiliate manager, right? She, she, and I'm not saying that it's commission-based, so like, but either your affiliate manager makes more money when you make more money or they will eventually get a raise when you make more money, depending on whether it's commission or salary. So it's kind of like ask, like you said, the affiliate manager because they have every incentive on the planet to help, help you. Yeah, we're not here to waste either of our time. Like, my goal is to make you more money. So your affiliate manager should absolutely be your biggest advocates and working with you. And again, your peers, you know, plug into some masterminds and stuff. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, I think we're, uh, I think we're about out of time. Uh, thank you, ladies, for a great panel. And thank definitely you. Thank you.